We gotta hear it. Grady says no. Oh. <laughs> we just put new batteries in her. Vindication. We'll just put her right here. Yes. Hello, Dara. It's my Valentine's hippo. I hate the hippo. You hate all the hippos. I, hate, I like the quiet ones. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Grady's backing me up here. And here's my Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Hi. Scratching your butt. Do fish just... you want treats? Oh. oh, he heard the. Oh, are you going to bite me? Are you going to bite me? Are you going to bite me? That's what we're going to do? Ow. Okay. Well, you... scratching your butt. Do you know the the particular way they run when treats, when, when there's yeah, a call for treats? Oh, yeah. It's it's like this little crouch down close to the ground and, and very yeah. directed. Thump, 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 thump. The yeah. scramble. Yeah, Grady just. Ugh, Grady just did that. All right, Grady, I got a meat stick for you. You want the meat stick? Grady, you want your treats? Treats, buddy? It's is Peggy a biter? Peggy's not generally a biter. She's just a brawler. True to her namesake, Peggy is a brawler. Oh, and now you're now so, you're too loud. Turn turn down a little bit. She will she will use whatever tools at her disposal to kick your ass. Yeah. Unless she's purring in your face and rubbing on you and being a total love bug. Turn it down a little bit more. I don't know what is with. Uh... Is that better? Perfect, right there. Good. Okay. All right, we're good there. Now when it's terrible again. Wow, my lighting's really bad today. <sighs> Didn't change anything. This oh, you know what it is? We have boxes stacked in front of the other light. So I don't have like... Because somebody, Dan, stacked a bunch of boxes. Don't flip me off off camera. That's <laughs> Oh, married life. Don't flip me off. You don't have to move all the boxes. So, um, it's, it's been a little, it's been, a, it's, it's been an interesting night. Yeah. Like in the time it took me to touch up my makeup, we lost a national security advisor. <laughs> like I came downstairs and Dan's like, so Michael Flynn resigned. And I'm like, in the time it took me to touch, like put on lipstick. The lesson here, I think you guys appreciate how much shit I slap on my face so that I don't look like I died three days ago on camera. Tara, the lesson here obviously is you need to spend more time putting on makeup. For real. Like, I'm just going to sit in front of my vanity until they're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck knew that was the key? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was up putting on my 16 pounds of bronzer that it takes to show up on camera and boom. So I. I indeed. I indeed. Oh, boy. Uh, I'll scratch in your butt. See, she doesn't even really bite. She just kind of threatens to bite. She's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, oh. Well, we have other and different news. Less, less, well, actually, no, this, how is it? This was not even supposed to be Trump related and it's, it's fucking Trump related, but how does that happen? Every week, an exciting new person comes to Twitter to tell me exactly what's wrong with me and like in exactly what way I'm too political or, and I'm like, that's cool. I still don't. Cool story, though. It's like it's like being back in high school. There's all these people just showing up to tell you what's wrong with you. Like every week, I got some new random ass stranger who's like, well, actually, this is why you're an asshole. And I'm like, actually, this is why I don't give a fuck. I just turned fucking 40. <laughs> I am officially too old to give a fuck. 
But we, you still have another 30 years before you're too old to give a fuck and everyone thinks it's adorable that you don't give a fuck. I know. Like, I'm still expected to give a fuck, but I don't. Yeah. Well. This many. Well, let's. This many? I don't know. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this is one of those moments that there are some people I know who just will not fly. They're like howling that, they'll, no, they're like B.A. Baracus, they will not get on a fucking plane. And I think you're silly. Because I've been on lots of planes, and they're perfectly safe, and there's... I don't love it. Like, if I'm more than 20 feet off the ground, I'm fucking nervous. I'll do it, because it's the only way you get to places like Hawaii, but I don't like it. But but then stuff like this happens, and I get them. I, I really get them. Um... United Pilot removed from flight... Uh, after rant over intercom. United Airlines confirmed a pilot on Friday uh, from Austin to San Francisco was removed from a plane Saturday evening. United Flight 455 was scheduled to depart Austin Bergstrom Airport just after 5 p.m. Um, uh, Austin uh, police also confirmed Saturday evening the pilot was removed from the plane. Um, Pastor told the, uh, on the flight told KXIN, the pilot who was not in uniform, quote, started to rant to the passengers over the plane's intercom. According to passengers, the pilot, quote, first complained of her divorce, then proceed to complain about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. According to Flight Aware, the plane departed approximately two hours late. Man, those safety feature speeches just keep getting weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, going through a divorce sucks. I've done it. It sucks. But, like, you gotta... You gotta keep that shit home. I or mean, get yourself a therapist. Whatever you gotta do, like... That's... It's one of those moments that kind of reminds you the only thing between you... And an explosive, fiery, plunging death is one person who could be having a really terrible day. Yeah. That's some scary shit. Now, of course, there's a co-pilot, but do you know how easy it is to strangle a co-pilot? No, I don't. No, seriously, if if you if someone just flips out, goes completely loco in the cabin. What well, happened? That German pilot who just steered the plane into the fucking mountains. Like, maybe that happened with the Malaysian plane. They still don't fucking know. Like, it has happened that some pilot brain goes kablooey and they just decide to kill a couple hundred people. So when you're about to fly and the pilot shows up, not even in uniform, and starts making it starts bitching about their divorce and Donald Trump on the intercom. And look, like I I'm happy to blame a lot of shit on Donald Trump. His, your divorce is probably not his fault. Like, probably not, unless you were married to Melania or something. Like, your divorce is probably not his fault. We can't hang everything on that guy. It's just, it's, though, being in that situation, that's enough. I, I can understand why people would be like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to fly now. Why? Because crazy person could be running. No. Flight staff work insane hours. Like, it's a problem that pilots often don't get enough sleep. They're working long hours. They don't get enough of a break in between. Same with the flight attendants. So, like, if you're going through a bad divorce and this election has taken a toll on you mentally and you haven't really slept more than three hours in a week, your reality button might blow. Yeah. The reality button. <laughs> I stole that from Scream. Ah. <sighs> 
And that's yes, I know a couple married for over 50 years, got divorced because the husband voted for Trump. I would have left his ass too. That's kind of, that would have kind of been the the straw. That would have that that would have been like if Dan came home and was like, "So I've decided I'm voting for Donald Trump." I would have been like, "The cats are in my name, motherfucker." America <laughs> great. <laughs> my boss came out of his office yesterday and shouted that, and literally the entire staff glared at him, uh. and he just like slunk away. We were like, "No, <laughs> no." Oh, uh, well, it's not just us who are a bunch of weird imbeciles here in America. Canada has their occasional weird imbecile as well. But they're um, very polite imbeciles. This, okay, the only thing missing from this next story is the guy who was shooting it for YouTube. Apparently, this they just did this, which... Intoxicated New Brunswick men go through McDonald's drive through on a sofa. Like a rolling sofa? Two New Brunswick men have been arrested after allegedly going through a McDonald's drive through on a couch. Miramichi uh, police said an officer spotted the couch being towed behind an ATV <laughs> at 3 a.m. in the drive through which is exactly the time any employee does not want to be dealing with this shit. I mean, did they pay? I'm not sure I see the problem here. It gets better. And when the officer put his lights on, the ATV took, the four-wheeler took off with the sofa still attached, but he left his two passengers from the sofa at the drive through Oh no, they lost their ride. Two passengers from the sofa, and this is a quote, the two passengers from the sofa or the couch or whatever you want to call it were intoxicated. The driver raced to the parking lot across the highway and onto the frozen river, still towing the couch through much of his escape. At what point did they get off the sofa? I... I'm not sure I understand how this is illegal. Like, if I was paid for the food... You can't just get on the roadway on any old makeshift contraption you desire, Tara. Come on, you've lived in the South. <laughs> we went to Florida. I legit saw a guy driving on the road on a four-wheel fucking ATV with a garbage pan, garbage can bungeed to the front. <laughs> Down the fucking road. Uh, <laughs> the officer said it is illegal to tow a couch through a drive through but the two men were wearing helmets, so, quote, so obviously safety was somewhat I want to know, I want to see the law. I want to see that <laughs> statute that says it's illegal, because I don't believe that's a law. I don't really think it is. I, like, if I was one of these guys, I'd be like, show me that fucking law. <laughs> Show me what you're charging with. Show me what I did that you can say is illegal. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. It's Canada, actually. I'm sorry. I thought this was Canada. I just wanted a fucking McGriddle. And I don't think that's crime. <laughs> I think Justin Trudeau, Trudeau would be cool with it. He seems like a pretty chill guy. Uh... I mean, yeah, I guess technically that's not safe. <laughs> Tara, you show me where you can get a license to drive a couch, and I will agree with you. I'm just saying, if, they're, if, if their argument is it's illegal to drive a sofa through the drive-thru, then I would like to see that in writing. Well, you know what? Here's another one that it's not illegal, or you would like to see it in writing. Okay, I got another story for you then. Man remanded in custody for having sex with a drain. Ew. Man has been banged up after he was hauled before court for allegedly having sex with a sewer grate. Oh, gross. 
Lauren Grosu was remanded into custody after he allegedly seen fornicating with the drain cover in the middle of the day. Grosu, 33, denied indecent exposure, exposure, outraging public decency, and criminal damage relating to the January 17th instrument, uh, incident. The man from Romford, East London, appeared in court on Monday where he was remanded to custody. Look, <laughs> Pennywise is going to say all kinds of shit. To do <laughs> but I promise you are, he is not going to blow you. Hey, Georgie, I'll suck your dick. I'll and if he does, dick, you've seen his teeth. It's not going to feel good. <laughs> Don't oh. do it. Don't stick your dick in the sewer clown's mouth. Oh, yes, we all float. That's so, that's so gross. I hope he, I hope they gave him a tetanus shot. Why on God's green earth would you, of all the places to stick your dick, Right? Like, did, did he not have hands? <laughs> exactly! I hear you, buddy. Yes. <laughs> He's like, Dad, that's gross. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, I'm not. Why? I don't know. This, this, just, it, how do you, how are you just walking along one day, just like, do, 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 do. oh, I think I'll fuck what? that. It's a beautiful day out. I'm going to stick my dick in the sewer drain. Don't do that. It's not sanitary. <laughs> I just, it's, uh, uh, it's, Like, you're going to invent a whole new STD. Just or, a, like, you're going to get MRSA on your dick, and then good luck. Like, I've had MRSA. They just carved that shit out. I was about to mention this, just to, while we're, side note, while we're on the topic. You know, I'm not making this up. They're going, to, scientists are going to be sending samples of MRSA to the International Space Station to attempt to see if it mutates. Why are scientists not required to watch sci-fi horror movies? <laughs> In order to get a fucking dime of funding, you should have to <sighs> take in a pre-selected syllabus of compulsory sci-fi horror. Those motherfuckers not see Prometheus? You don't just bring viruses into space. Well, to be honest, a lot of people didn't see Prometheus because it sucked. But your point stands. That's how you get xenomorphs. Do you want xenomorphs? Because that's how you get xenomorphs. <sighs> Move just shoot Earth into space and see what happens. Moving on to... I'm going to warn you about this one. This one's got an autoplay because it's... Of course it does. It's AOL. Um... Uh, this is Florida. Okay. Where would we be without Florida? I'm sure many of us think we deserve to be paid better. We deserve a better life. We deserve... We, we think the Lord wants us to have everything that, that life could give us. But, um... This is kind of taking God helps those who help themselves the wrong direction. Florida man caught trying to steal $7 billion blames Jesus. Oh, hell no. An unemployed Lakeland man faces a five-year prison sentence and a fine of up to $250,000 after making a $7 billion fraudulent wire transfer because Jesus Christ chose him to be wealthy according to court documents. I know, right? I agree. That is bullshit. John well, has... That line, it's easier to for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Except for you. 
You should be wealthy. Jesus wasn't super into the whole money thing, you guys. I don't know where people get this. Like, half of America seems to be confused about this. Jesus, not so into the money. John Haskew stated that Jesus Christ created wealth for everyone. Using this scheme, Haskell believed he could obtain the wealth that Jesus Christ created for him and that belonged to him, according to court documents. There's also this little thou shalt not steal thing written on a tablet for like nine other things. Askew told police that he was, quote, self-taught on the banking industry <laughs> and was able to learn how to make fraudulent wire transfers through experimentation. When Askew was asked why he continued to make more, more wire transfers, he told investigators he believed that he deserved the money. I believe that I deserve more money. I do not, however, believe that Jesus believes that I deserve more money. I, I think Jesus has better things to do than worry about if I can afford couture. I also think Jesus thinks the most we have things to do. Yeah, well, listen, this, this is the guy. This is the smirking jackass. Look at the jag-off haircut. I'm sorry, look at that jag-off haircut. I've, I'm going to say it. I'm a just side note to everything else. This is old man Nash ranting a bit. I'm about tired of this hipster mohawk shit. Where you just save the exact sides of your head, but leave everything up here. And then have a weird little ponytail here. Yeah. Fun. I'm about sick of that snidely little jackass. I don't. I, I know I'm old because I don't get the fucking man bun. Like, that shit's not cute. I'm, I'm, look, and the fucker has the nerve to just smile. The iconic Hitler haircut? Stupid. Like, Stupid looking. This smirking jackass in his fucking, you're going to jail, you idiot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, jail. Uh, oh, okay. Here's another one of those. Wait, this really happened again? A few months ago, um, remember there was a story we had, I believe it was uh, in Europe, where a guy pretended to be kidnapped so his parents would pay like about $300. And you're like, and we were like, you dick. Well, guess what? Monkey see, monkey do, I guess. Alabama man charged with extortion claimed he would be killed if grandmother didn't pay. Come on, don't do that to your grandma. North Alabama man is jailed after falsely claiming he had been kidnapped, beaten, and bound to extort a thousand dollars from his grandmother. Preston Kelly, 23, of Florence, sent his grandmother a photo that made it look like he was being held captive in the woods in Tennessee. Uh, Kelly told the grandmother if she didn't go to Walmart and send him $1,000 through a money gram, he would be killed. He never got any money, officers say. The grandmother came straight to us. Investigators began probing the case as a possible kidnapping. Later that day, Kelly was taken into custody on a first degree extortion charge. Don't do that to your grandma. Grandma doesn't need that shit. Grandma doesn't deserve that shit. You son of a bitch. I mean, you know he's a fucking winner because he's got a bunch of face tats. Oh, so clearly he needs to restore grandma because he can't get a job. I make that bigger. Okay. That, yeah, he's... that that. There's a winner for you, kids. Look, I'm not one to judge people's choices. You want to pierce your ears and stretch them out this big? I don't really get that. Like, it's not reversible, but... If that's your thing, do your thing, man. Like, do you yeah. see the, do you see the bull on his neck? Consider, consider the life you want to lead. Like, if you want to work in a tattoo shop, cool. Tat up your whole face. It's but if you're in school for like fucking accounting, if you're gonna do pretty much anything but be 
in a rock band or work in a tat shop, you probably should stay away from the face tat. The only thing missing is damaged right yeah. here. That's the only thing missing. He's got I'm loyalty. Not, not your life choices, but think about the life you want to lead before you get the face tats. Uh, That's all I'm saying. Don't put you're, your... You are limiting your options a bit. Why would you do this to your grandma? Yeah, and don't do this to your grandma. I'm here to judge that life choice. That's I bullshit. Love my grandma. I didn't know either of my grandmas, but I wouldn't do that. I, I love both my grandmas. My grandmas were awesome. I wouldn't... I love my grandma. My grandma was great. Even when I was grown up, I would drive over to her house and hang out. And she'd be like, how you doing, sweetie? And we would talk about stuff. And she was awesome. And I wouldn't try to extort a thousand. A thousand dollars. Really? A I thousand. I hear from my one grandma on my mother's side, but I heard she was really cool. I know not everyone watching the show is all that wealthy. I know. It's, it's America these days. We're all kind of busting our asses. But. I'm pretty sure if you scrambled hard enough, if you were in a desperate enough strait, you could gather enough belongings around your domicile, shove them on eBay, and come up with approximately $1,000 the yeah. hard way. Everyone's got plasma. But to, to get 1000 from your grandmother. Jeez. And look at, look at the look on this guy's like, <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to go to jail. Welcome to jail. I hope you have fun in jail. Yeah. Poor grandma. Poor grandma. All right. And speak. We started with an airplane story. We're ending with an airplane story. The first one was unsettling. The second one is... Well, no, this is pretty unsettling, too. Um... Holy shit. We, we think that the people who, who take care of our um, air forces, the, the large military flying machines that are responsible for our safety and well-being, guarding our borders around the world, um, we think these people are highly trained, dedicated, disciplined, and focused on their tasks, especially during operation. You'd like to think... Board RAF pilot, pilot sent 187 passengers into a nosedive while playing with his camera. Oof. RAF pilot flying nearly 200 service personnel to Afghanistan sent his passenger jet into a nosedive when a camera he had been playing with jammed the flight controls. Oh my God. As the Voyager aircraft plummeted 4,400 feet in seconds, passengers were pinned to the ceiling, left thinking they would die. But after Flight Lieutenant uh, Andrew Townsend regained control of the 197 foot wingspan aircraft, he allegedly lied in both a technical log and a service inquiry insisting the incident had been caused by a technical fault. They're going to find out. Uh, Can you imagine? Like, bad enough, like, your loved one is going to Afghanistan and could be killed there, but, like, they, they didn't even make it there because some fucker was taking selfies, like... Flight Lieutenant Townsend was uh, bored while flying from the UK to Camp Bastion in Afghanistan and practicing long-exposure photography when his co-pilot left the cockpit to get a cup of tea. His Nikon DSLR, oh, I have one of those, uh, was positioned in front of his armrest and became jammed with the plane's controls when he moved his seat forward. Camera wedged between his armrest and side stick, a joystick used to control the plane, which pushed it forward, disengaging the autopilot and causing the plane to nosedive. Oh, my God. The descent was unannounced, so passengers experienced weightlessness they were thrown to the ceiling and thought they were going to die that's how they train astronauts the yeah. vomit comet they vomit make comet. that's that's how they train as they drop the plane super fast can we get dan's take on this one i'm pretty sure it's gonna be fuck that guy <laughs> fuck that guy that's dan's take on this one. Oh my 
god. I mean, they do, I don't know if they do this in England, but the stories he's told me, like, they do fucked up shit to dudes in the army. Like, the food is designed so that you only poop every two weeks. Did you know that? The food is specially designed so that they don't have to poop out in the field. Like, there are things that they do that will mess you up. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, the MREs that they Wait. Use, like, they're scientifically, chemically designed to make them not have to poop. For well, weeks at a time. It's not that they don't have to poop. But they don't. It's that it's on deck. So, no, that's called constipation, Tara. <laughs> they're deliberately constipating. Yes. It saves them cleanup. I don't know more efficient or something I... you come here i need a hug <laughs> these are things i've learned being married to a veteran it's very educational watching action movies is so educational now because it's just like that kind of gun doesn't even do that like we were watching winter shoulder and black widow gets shot in the shoulder and he's like yeah there's no way because she'd have a giant like her shoulder would be obliterated with that kind of gun and i'm like oh okay <laughs> But yeah, you, you cannot, I mean... But even if you haven't pooped in three weeks, you cannot just fuck around with your camera and almost kill 4,000 people, or yeah. 200 people plummeting 4,000 feet. You can't do that. That's not, no. Yeah, when you're on the job, there are some things you can do. You can listen to music. You can maybe put on a podcast or NPR or something. But if you have to focus on keeping 200 people from plunging to their deaths... Put the camera down. Yeah. Put the... How did he think... How was this a good idea? How was this a fucking good idea? I know. Oh, I'm in a plane. I can get some great shots up here. Yeah, you're flying the plane, shithead. Yeah. Kind of, kind of important. I'll get it. National Geographic. You'll get in a fucking coffin. You fucking idiot. And a lovely court martial. Yes. Fuck you, jail. We haven't had a good fuck you, jail in a while. Fuck you, jail. Fuck you, military jail. Fuck you, yeah, military jail, not fun. Mm -mm. So I guess the first thing we learned this week is focus on the task at hand. Yeah. Pay attention at work. Oh, hi, Greedy. He's like, could you, could you, could you, could you not? Too bad you're gonna be and, and you're so reflective. You're reflecting the light. Could you not with the moving? Nope. Too bad you're on the show. Come here, Peggy. We're gonna have a cute off. Oh, what? What? What do you want? What? Hi. Hi. Say hi to the internet. Hi. Why am I awake? Excuse me. Why am I awake? I gotta go. I gotta go. See, at least, at least Grady's just sitting here happily purring and Yeah, these girls are not too into being headed. Stuff. Adi will rabbit kick you in the face with her little back legs. He's trying to hide. Like, they're, they're good lap kitties, but they don't love being picked up. Hi. Hi. What you doing? Okay, I'll let you go. There you go. There you go. So I guess, yeah, the first... Someone in the chat called you a mansplainer because you tell me how guns work. Okay. What? First thing we learned this week is focus on the job. The next thing we learned was um, don't, don't extort your grandma. Why do I have to say a sentence like that out loud? Steal from your grandma, you piece of shit. Don't extort. We I actually have to out loud. I'm sorry, you limited your career options by getting a bunch of janky face tats. But that's your choice. You made that choice, and you have to live with it. We've learned. Um, you have hands. Don't fuck a sewer drain. That's not sanitary. You've got two of them. I'm sure one of them. You can figure out what to do with it. 
We've learned um, Jesus does not want you to have $7 billion. He really doesn't. Jesus Jesus isn't about the wealth. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much made it clear. I mean, if you've actually read the Bible, instead of just waving it around and And pointing, that's what's funny. Like, Jesus, not a whole lot to say about, like, homosexuality or abortion. A lot to say about money. Yeah. Well, have you ever... Weird how we get that so backwards. Have you ever seen those people who, who will, will point with the Bible as if, like, it's a magic totem or something? Have you seen the movie Saved? No. It's I, a really good movie. I'm has, aware of it, but I haven't seen it. It has Mandy Moore. It's a really good movie. I highly recommend it. And there's a point where she throws her Bible at someone and goes, I am filled with Christ's love. And that's what I think of with we, these fucking people. We've learned you you probably... It is illegal. We have learned, actually, we all learned tonight. It is illegal to go through a couch, to go through a drive through of McDonald's in Canada on a couch. Yeah, I That's... might have to challenge that. Tara, don't. We've made can we've made Canada angry enough already. Do you forgive me? Okay. Canada has to deal with the next four years of this fucking administration. Oh, but did you see Justin Trudeau, like, defeated his ridiculous handshake? I missed Trump that. has this thing, like, he can't yeah, he, hand... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, like, yanks you in. Trudeau totally got out of the car, and, like, when he went for the yank, he, like, pulled him towards him and then put his hand on his arm. Like, it was genius. Like, he totally, like, beat him in his own game. And finally, we've learned... Those people you know who are a little bit scared of flying. They got a point. They got a point. They got a very scary... Jesus also didn't have a lot to say about being 30,000 feet in the fucking air. No, he didn't. Just saying. Shit ain't natural. We also learned that every time Tara does her makeup, we lose White House officials. Oh, I wish. Not every time. I don't go to the drive-thru without at least mascara, you guys. You got, you got to like, you, you got to like. If they were dropping every time I did makeup, we'd be down to like the interns running the country. By the Tara, time. you have got to spend the next three weeks doing nothing but putting on makeup for America. I mean, I could do that. I have enough. Your country needs you. <laughs> okay. 